Welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here on the floor in Las Vegas for VMware Explorer 2024. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here with Chris Prasad, Senior Vice President, General Manager of the VMware Cloud Foundation Division, VCF, the core product with Broadcom VMware. Chris, great to see you, thanks for coming yeah, on. Good to see you again. He's the man of the hour, um, VCF, the core flagship offering, simplified, all those SKUs boiled down into a handful of products. They're running a, you're running a tight ship. Yes. Um, a lot of transition conversations, but you start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. Um, and you know, you've, you've made some good progress. Yeah. We've been following your launch prior to here. Um, again, more updates. Yeah. More feature rich on things that were on the roadmap now done. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, you know, uh, today uh, we announced uh, VCF9 we just think of it as the next generation of VCF. And one of the, the fundamental changes we made, John, as you know, coming into the acquisition is, you know, we took all the product teams, which were organized as uh, siloed business units, and we put it together to one division, which is the division that I run. And the reason we did that is because we want to deliver a platform not a set of products that are integrated. And so that's what VCF9 is all about. It's a well integrated platform that yeah. customers can deploy in their private infrastructure, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, and really get a very consistent experience like a AWS type model yeah. uh, within on-premise and also in the cloud. And certainly with Gen AI, there's a big pressure to more on-prem, especially with data being the yes, value exactly. proposition, proprietary intellectual property with data. Yep. What's the key conversations with customers at this show? Obviously, the, uh, the customer environment, the partner environment, going through the transition to the new Broadcom VMware, what are some of those conversations here at VMware Explore 2024? I mean, it's, uh, it's actually amazing because a lot of the customers are now, you know, five years ago, customers were, hey, we are taking our workloads to the public cloud, right, and, and our on-prem will be just a legacy setup. Um, that has significantly changed because the cost of the, the public cloud is spiraling out of control in many of these customers' cases. So they are taking a much more balanced approach. Not that they are not using public cloud, but it's much more balanced. They are, they are deploying several workloads on-prem and in the cloud. And they are looking for a platform that can run in both places and have a consistent experience. And that's what VCF brings to the table. So from a strategy standpoint, it's right on. Customers love what we are doing because it's exactly what they need because you don't want to have a different experience when you go to the cloud versus on-prem. It's funny, you know, Andy Jass used to say in AWS, why would anyone build the data in hot tans? Why would anyone want the cloud? Basically is what he said, that's my words, <laughs> not his. Yeah. Um, enterprises have long struggled with siloed architectures you mentioned and just public cloud by itself. Now data centers are getting re reset, re-architected for now the Gen AI wave. Um, you know, neither fully delivering on the value by themselves, but together, as you point out, is key. How are you going to position that? Because we're hearing things that are coming out, like seamless migration that wasn't there before. You used to manually have to do professional services to migrate vSphere mm -hmm. in with the full management for SDDC. Now that's a script. Yeah, I mean, now, now I you mean, got cool things that's easy, push a button. Yeah, we actually, we are doing a very automated uh, movement of workloads from previous versions of uh, either vSphere or even VCF to the newer versions of VCF. And it's, uh, it's going to be fully automated. They don't have to do anything special to move from one version yeah. to the next. And, and I think that's a good note that yeah. this new architecture is there. What are some of the challenges uh, with the old architecture, current architectures, siloed and cloud that you guys are solving? I mean, uh, just looking internally, we used to be a set of products, individual products coming out from individual divisions, and so compute would come out at one point in time, network <laughs> would be at a different timeline, right? The storage would be at a different timeline. You cannot deliver a full cloud platform that way because it's, it's all in different timelines, different support, all of that. Now it's all gone. It's all an R&D team that is providing one product, which is the cloud platform, and we are building it all together. You know, one of the things, uh, being old like the us at theCUBE, now 15 years covering VMware, we've seen the movie, yep. many acts of the movie, you know, um, VMware was a very uh, infiltrated infrastructure in the enterprise, and people sold stuff with it, kind of artificially lowered in, in, in price in our opinion. We were commenting on that. Yeah. But now, 
it's recognized that it is now part of the infrastructure. Yes. So you got a transformation going on in multiple phases. You got the VMware company transformation, yes. the VCF transformation, yes. and the customer transformation. Because yes. all three are happening at yes. the same time. Yes. Share your thoughts on this because I think this is a critical uh, power dynamic that's causing a lot of FUD, there's a lot of misinformation. Yeah. Clear, clear, clear it up. So from a VMware standpoint, we transformed our organization to set ourselves up to deliver the platform like you discussed. In addition to that, we are transforming, going from perpetual to subscription. So one of, one of the things you hear is, hey, the pricing has changed, you know, that is creating concerns, but it's really about customers who are on perpetual license going to a subscription license. And as you well know, all the infrastructure providers are on subscription, right? Yeah. We are actually the last ones to be on yeah. perpetual. So we are just catching up with the market. There is nothing uh, artificial about price increase that we are doing. It's just the transition from perpetual SNS to subscription. So that's the second transformation that we are going through. Customers, on the other hand, they were building their own cloud platform using DIY, you know, I can build my own and use silo technologies to build it, and they were not seeing the TCO benefits or the operational effectiveness by doing that. And so they are now looking for a platform that they can just deploy, easily deploy without having to do all the integration themselves. And so the timing is in a, a good way, you know, we are hitting it at the right time. And customers are really looking for a solution that will take them fast to the cloud operating model. I think this is why I think the unification message yes. is, is there. It's not yes. just on premises. Yeah. You got clouds, cloud operations. Yes. That's a key part of that yes. customer journey. I mean, what we mean by private is, it is about your private infrastructure that you have, but the infrastructure could be on Amazon, it could be on Prem, it could be at the edge, it could be, so it is, but it is still your private infrastructure on which you are running VCF everywhere. VCF9, what's the highlights there? Give us a quick um, unpacking of VC VCF9 yep. for the folks out watching. Yeah, number one, it's uh, it's actually a completely, that's why I called it a new generation. It's a completely redesigned uh, solution that delivers it as a platform, not as a, a set of disparate products. That's the number one change that you will see. It is, it just goes in very easily and it uh, converts your infrastructure to a cloud. Okay, and then, you know, all the different pieces, management, operations, all of that is tightly integrated and built in so that you don't have to think about, oh, now I have to do the, bring this piece and tie it together and all of that. It comes out of the box and it also has the ability to take uh, previous generations of your infrastructure with vSphere and import it into this new, it's very easy to do, it is automated, so customers will have an easy yeah. path to get to this. You know, it's interesting, uh, Chris, we've been talking many times on theCUBE, we've had conversations around this, but if you step back and zoom out, one thing that we see clear in our CUBE research team is, is that your customers, people we talk to all the time, yep. are saying, look it, the bar has been raised. Generative AI has raised the stakes yes. of modernizing yep. my infrastructure. So yep. there's a real pressure. Yes. And I think this, this um, shift is timely because you're saying, okay, perpetual license, we're going to clean up our business model, yep. which you just talked about, but also set the table for you to have a subscription. Mm -hmm. Yeah, notwithstanding budget surprises or new, new pricing, um, but the value yes. is really going to be at that unification platform because the bar is raised, yes. the, the stakes are high, yes. but the speed yep. is there. So they're all resetting. Yes. They're looking at, the, at this as a reset moment for a generation yes. of new apps, yes. new workloads. So yes. this migration with a click of a button, out of the box, as you say, seamless, is better than yes. pausing, yes. sending a bunch of people in there, putting all the configs into a file, moving yes. things over. That takes time. Yes. This is the new VCF. Yeah, that is. it is easy to deploy, uh, fastest time to value, those are all the things that we are focused on. And then obviously on top of it, we are enabling AI, you know, so that uh, the generative AI workloads can run seamlessly on it. And NVIDIA just published a bunch of benchmarks where they show that in many cases, our stack with the cloud platform runs faster than bare metal. Yeah. And so that that's uh, so they they can come on it, they get the entire platform with VCF running wherever the data is, and they can do the processing closer to the data. Let's talk about the psychology of the customer base and, and somewhat the partners, because they're yeah. kind of related. Those are the two areas that are most, you know, kind of on fire, and well, you know, the <laughs> FUD and, and, and the, the angst or tension. Yep. Um, and the rough waters right now, but the smooth sailing ahead. 
as we see. The psychology is, okay, I'm going to subscription, I've got the platform, I'm mm -hmm. building for the future. Okay, buy all that, makes sense. But I need to see, I'm, okay, I've seen CA in the past with Broadcom. If I'm a customer and what we're saying to them and what they're telling us, but vice versa, is that show me the roadmap. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you're giving a TCO benefit. Yeah. Because migration's hard. Yep. You're running critical apps on yes. VMware. Yes. It's infrastructure. Yes. It's, you can't just, that's operating. Yes. You can't just rip and replace that. Yes. I mean, what are you going to do? Yes. There's, you, there's not a lot of options. Yes. Okay, so your job is to put the roadmap together because yes. I'm the customer. I'm telling them, call Chris up. Yep. Have him show you the roadmap. That's the tell sign. Yes. And Broadcom, and I give Broadcom props for this, because it's in their DNA, they yes. build product. Yes. And VMware builds product. Yes. That's the synergy. Yes. We've talked about that on theCUBE. Yes. So what's, the roadmap is the ultimate proof point. Yes. Because I see patterns that I might have seen in other generations yes. of IT. Yes. Mergers and acquisitions. Yes. But at the end of the day, you're saying you're going to do stuff, show me. Yes. So there are, there are two things I would say which is different than how past acquisitions have worked for Broadcom. One is that, you know, if you look at how Broadcom has treated VMware, Broadcom is still supporting the entire customer segments, all the way from our smaller customers to all the bigger customers. And so we haven't narrowed down the focus. The Hawk is committed to uh, supplying the entire customer base of 350K customers. So that's one big difference from the, uh, the previous acquisition. The second one is this whole show is centered around VCF and all the roadmap elements. I mean, there is uh, tons of uh, you know, demos and you know, uh, roadmap sessions where we are actually talking about all the things that are coming. And the biggest thing that is going to affect the roadmap is that we collapse the organization into one business unit or one division that I'm running. It gives us focus, it gives yeah. us speed, and you will see a lot of innovation accelerating coming out of uh, VMware into Broadcom. So listen to the customer, focus on their needs. Yes. If you're a partner, engineer in. Yes. It seems to be the strategy, yes. not just Hang on. Yeah, the key partners like Dell, HP, Lenovo, Fujitsu, and so on. I mean, the, the key uh, for them is do an engineered solution, add value, take our software, their hardware, put it together into an engineered solution, deliver it to customers. And that's going to be a great conversation for theCUBE, obviously, because it's got a lot of platform engineering involved. Yes, yes. It's right in our wheelhouse. Great job, great job clarifying that, I appreciate that. Okay, now let's talk about, I'm the customer. Yep. Okay, guide me through the approach, okay? I got private, public cloud modernization plans. Yep. What, what do I do? What's the game plan? Yeah, so I, in fact, one of the big things that uh, we have done in Broadcom is a focus on making customers successful with the adoption. So it is not just about creating the product, it's also putting programs together for adoption. So we have a thing called Jumpstart that comes with the SKU for VCF, where we go in and do a cloud maturity assessment Hey customer, what do you want to do? Where are you on-prem? Where are you on the public cloud? How do you get from where you are to the next stage, all the way to the, the private infrastructure across uh, you know, public and private with VCF on top? And so that's yeah. something that we have built into the, the yeah. product queue. Learning and training is now free. Yeah. It comes with the product. So we are doing a lot of stuff to really enable the customers to get, get there much faster. And look at their estate. Yeah, figure out their infrastructure, yeah. modernize it. Yeah, and show them the path yeah. to yeah. get to the full private. Sitting on the beach is no longer an option because the Gen AI wave is here, we always see that. Yeah. Awesome, but more broadly, let's zoom out. Private, public cloud, what's your perspective? Obviously, you know, there's a lot of surge in the enterprise on private cloud because of cloud operation. Edge is right there and around the corner. That's another yeah. premise as yeah. well. Yeah. What's your What's your view of I public mean, uh, versus look, private? I mean, I think it's, uh, it, uh, you know, public cloud is going to continue to grow. Private cloud is going to continue to grow. That's the, that's the situation we are in because customers are deciding which workloads to keep private and which workloads to take to the public cloud. And what we are saying is, hey, that is great, both will grow, but customer, you need a consistent platform that runs across both yep. so that you can easily move the workloads around, you know, and that's what we provide with VCF. You know, one of the things that's always been kind of, we, and we wrote the, the uh, pri private cloud brief with Wikibon now called the Cube Research, almost a decade ago, the future of private cloud, it's, it's almost been kind of like less appealing than hybrid, obviously hybrid came on board. Um, public cloud has traditionally been perceived as less appealing mm -hmm. versus public cloud, yes. we saw that. What should customers know about VCF's uh, power dynamic in the changing rent landscape? Because what should they know about the potential of private cloud? What's, yeah. give, what's I mean, in it for them? 
the, the reason why the private cloud was less appealing is because, like I said, most customers were trying to integrate the silos together themselves and then yeah. stitch it together into some kind of experience. And that never got to the experience that the public cloud would provide. And what we are doing with VCF is, it's a platform yeah. that they don't need to do any integration. Deploy it on their infrastructure and we will give them the experience that they get in Amazon. So it, it raises the bar, it gets the experience yeah. to a different level. And that's what Hawk Tan was meaning on his keynote when he said you get AWS for the on-premises. Yeah, exactly. You get cloud-like cloud -like agility, yes. subscription, pay-as-you-go, yeah. all the goodness. Self-service, all of that for their developers. Okay, right? great. Future of private cloud. Yeah. Okay, take us into the future. How do you see that preferred future from your perspective of the future of the private cloud? Yeah, I mean, look, with the, the generative AI coming in, it's all about data, right? And, and uh, being able to process your data where the data resides, and then having all the controls around privacy and so on around data. And what we have with v VCF is one platform that uh, protects uh, your data, whichever, wherever the data is residing, whether it's on-prem or in the public cloud or whatever, yeah. and you, you get one layer that ties it all together, and with the same policies, the same security, and so on. Yeah. And that's really, I think the pure private cloud of A, it's just on-prem, is not going to be the future. It is going to be a combination, but you need a consistent experience tying it all together, yeah. and consistent security and compliance yeah. and all of that, and that's where yeah. we will actually shine. I mean, this is a distributed computing environment, yeah. heterogeneous, genius yes. platform, yes. and again, VMware's operationally very important yes. in all those big enterprises. Yes. They're running workloads. Yes. I mean, it's, it's continuing to grow. And the role of the GPUs and chips become very yes. important. Yes. Now I heard um, uh, David Alante and I here in the hallway that Broadcom kind of keeps a wall between the chips, you know, does VMware have an edge with VCF on the chip side? True or false, is there a wall there? Um, does VMware have access to the chips, custom silicon? Um, we saw yeah, Dell I and mean, EMC uh, take advantage of, like say, vSAN, you guys unbundled that and yeah, let the storage. I mean, I, I wouldn't say a wall, because uh, VC, v, vSphere and VCF uh, are open platforms. So in the past, we have certified all of Broadcom's hardware because for us to run in a heterogeneous data center, we have to support all the hardware. Because yeah. the customer decides which <laughs> chips they are going to buy. <laughs> and so we have supported Broadcom, we have supported yeah. Broadcom's competition, and we continue to do that. Yeah. So we support Broadcom, we support yeah. Broadcom's competition. You in, you're, up in, you're operating in almost independently. Yeah, it's an open system that, yeah. that's important to our yeah. business. We cannot be a cloud uh, software provider <laughs> without supporting all the hardware. It happens that Broadcom ships support Ethernet and all the cool, and they're good. Yes. And, and so the chips will win based on their own differentiation. If the Broadcom yeah. chip is better than the competition, yeah. people will buy that. As so we say, let the chips fall where they may, yeah. you know, as, they, exactly. the, as yeah. they say in the industry. Yeah. Okay, Krish, on a personal note, yes. you know, we've had many conversations in theCUBE. Yep. Your journey, you're now uh, in charge of VCF. Yep. Um, what's it like? Uh, what's it been like for you? Um, and through this process, yep. Share some share some uh, commentary on, on your perspective. Yeah, it has been uh, great. I mean, I, I think the ba uh, the biggest change that you see in Broadcom is that uh, it's a no frills environment, meaning it is very focused. Decisions are made very fast. Uh, you know, Hawk is not somebody who debates things for months and months, which used to be, by the way, in VMware. We, uh, you know, it was a more of a consensus environment, so it takes longer period of time to get to the answer. <laughs> uh, Broadcom is like, I can make a call now and Hawk will make a decision and we move on. Okay. And, and so that's a huge thing. The second thing is, you know, Hawk lets me drive the product roadmap and you know, there is no, yeah. you know, he doesn't come in and hey, Krish, go do that. You know, no, it's uh, what is right for my business, <laughs> I decide and I run. Well, you can call up Hawk and say, hey, you know, I want to come on theCUBE with you next time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe I'll, I'll do that, I'll see him today, I'll ask him. Hawk, come. if you're watching, you know, <laughs> come on, we've got a chair waiting for you. Yeah. Charlie's <laughs> been on, the whole yes. Broadcom team. Yes. It's, been, it's really been great to watch and again, there's been a lot of misinformation. My final question is, is that if you can clarify um, the top ranked cliches or misinformation, what would you say? Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is, uh, look, Broadcom, it's like the uh, typical acquisition where Broadcom is going to invest less and, uh, you know, squeeze the, uh, the VMware product set 
uh, especially VCF, which is completely opposite of what is happening. <laughs> Hawk has put, I mean, I can tell you that Hawk spends 90% of his time every day focused on VCF. <laughs> it is so important to him yeah. and so important to the company yeah. that he is focused on it uh, and then we all work together to make it a success and that's why we are moving very fast. It's interesting, Dave and I were doing a little historical view about VMware from 2010 when Palmer Rich was the CEO yeah. all the way through today and it's like, VMware, once it got in the hands of EMC, it was just a, kept, kept producing more cash. So yeah. if I'm Hawk 10, I'm the team, I'm like, whoa, we could, it's a good business. Yes. VMware is a good business. I mean, look, it's a, it's a great business because of the customers. Customers love the product. I mean, you can walk around and talk to any customers. Yeah, They'll say, yeah, it, it's one of the best products that they have ever used. And that's why it is difficult for them to move on from it. Right, because it satisfies their needs in a, in a great way. And so that that's the, the core of this. It does nothing more than yeah. it's a, a thing that customers love, and they have loved it from the days of ESX yeah. all the way to now. And product-led growth is another big part of this yes, for you is. guys as yes. well. Roadmap's yeah, important, good product, market fit. Yeah, and then customers moving to a cloud operating model is happening everywhere, so it actually, Fits the VCF story very well. And the subscription, nice little add-on. Yes. Get through the knot hole and then smooth yes. sailing. By the way, on subscription, I, I just want to make a point. We have uh, subscription portability between on-prem and the cloud. So you can take your VCF license from on-prem, move your workload to AWS, and you can take the license with you. And so, uh, that's another reason we have to be on subscription because we are allowing portability and it needs to be the same yeah. <laughs> when and you get to AWS. Do they get charged more or they just take their license over? No, just a license over. But Azure, yeah. Google, and yeah. AWS? And, and AWS and, and even uh, some of the other ones. But the, the, now they have to pay for the managed manage environment. Not for the software. Okay, got it. Okay. Cool. So. All right, so so congratulations. Thanks yeah. for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate you coming on and sharing it. Yep. And uh, next release, next year, yep. you guys you know, yeah. pedal yeah, as fast as you can. Just like our major releases. That's the next major release coming out. All right, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for sharing, and yeah. uh, we'll see you tomorrow All right. on theCUBE. Yes. All right. Thank thanks. you very Good. much. All right. Good. Uh, all right. Good to see you. Okay, yeah. we got the head of VCF. This is a VCF show customers. The innovation is there on the table. They're putting it out there. It's a new business model, it's transformation. VMware, VCF, and the customers all transforming at the same time. Of course, we're in the cube, we're transforming. Solutions, engineered solutions coming, more tech talk here on theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching. Thank you, John.